Hello, hi everyone. Uh, I will say good afternoon. It's already 12.02 p.m. Okay, so hi again to everyone who is joining this uh, live webinar. Uh, today is the third day of our APU industry career webinar and uh, and we're going to have more sessions today. Okay, so yeah, uh, by the way, my name is Ryan from APU Asia Pacific University and I'll be your MC for this session. Okay, uh, so as I mentioned just now, uh, today is the third day, which is also the last day. Uh, we have actually uh, run this uh, webinar session since Friday, which is 25th, uh, and also yesterday, 26th. Uh, and we cover quite a lot of area like data, uh, sorry, like cybersecurity, accounting, uh, engineering, uh, game design, AR, VR, and so on. There are a lot of area we have been covered. So if you miss any previous session, don't worry. Feel free to watch the replay on our Facebook or on our YouTube channel. But just in case you know you haven't followed us on our Facebook page or Instagram page or you know YouTube YouTube channel, do follow us or subscribe to our channel. All right. Um, of course, I would like to invite all of you to join our eOpen days. Okay, you can just go to our website apu.edu.my, click on the banner, and uh, our counselor are. Uh, available to you know guide you through uh, for your further study pathway all right okay so uh today's sessions i would say uh this current session uh is basically about ai and big data the topic is why ai and big data are skills for future jobs okay so you know when people talk about ai or big data uh, we always thought about it computer science thingy but the thing is that now today AI and big data is not only in computing field, it's actually you know being used in many industries, whether you are as a business management people, you are accountant, uh, you are you know if business owner and all these things. Uh basically now you have to embrace with AI and big data uh this kind of knowledge, this kind of technology to help on your uh job on your career. Okay, so yeah, today we have uh, two speakers with us. Uh, the first one will be Prof Vinesh. 
Pravinesh is our Deputy Vice Chancellor of APU. He's also the uh, uh, sorry, Chief Innovation Officer, right? Okay, and also um, Miss Swan, which is our Head of School for School of Computing. Uh, let us welcome Prof. Vinesh and also Miss Swan. Hi, Prof. Vinesh. Hi, Miss Swan. Hi, Hi Ryan. Hi. Okay. Thank you for the kind introduction. Okay, all right. Let, uh, let me pass the time to both of you. Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the APU and Industry Career Webinar. And uh, with me today is uh, the lovely Associate Professor Swan and my BFF here. And uh, <laughs> we'll take you on this journey over the next one hour on the topic uh, for this webinar, which is uh, why AI and big data are skills uh, for the future jobs. Now, yesterday, you must have uh, uh, gone through the, uh, the episode uh, or the webinar on uh, uh, Industrial Revolution 4.0, uh, which was done by my colleague, Mr. Gurpardip. Uh, today, we will take you deeper into two segments within the IR 4.0, uh, which is data science and uh, artificial intelligence. Yeah? So our focus today is to, to show you and to ensure you uh, that there is a pathway for realizing how AI and data science uh, uh, enables uh, workflows and has transformed businesses, yeah? uh, looking into the, the context of fulfillment, uh, of the IR 4.0 agenda, not only in Malaysia, but globally. So let me start by sharing my slides here. Uh, our slides are here today for this session. Yeah, just a quick check. Uh, Prof Swan, can you see the slides? Uh, I think it's loading. Yes, yes, I can see. Okay. Okay, fantastic. Okay. So when people talk about AI, uh, people talk about uh, the infusion of uh, digital solutions into uh, transforming a business, yeah, or any application within business operations. And that's what AI and data science actually is doing. Now, at APU, uh, we have multi facets of our programs which have been infused with digital content. But today, we're only going to talk about AI and what APU has done in terms of AI. So if you want to say or talk about AI, so no matter what the new AI economy means uh, for the future workforce, uh, university students and young professionals tend to benefit from entering this burgeoning uh, field. Yeah, It's a new field. Uh, and it's a, it's a breakthrough field uh, that isn't as simple as just learning computer science or earning a, a, a first step of a university degree. It takes initiative, guts, and basically to become a know-how technical person to have that career in AI. So I'll start the talk today together with Prof Swan in the area of AI first, and then we we'll slowly move on to data science, yeah? Uh, so there is at the moment a talent crisis, yeah? Uh, this is a report uh, late 2020 by Ernst and Young a talent crisis, uh, which basically reports on the skills gap in the recruitment of new scientists. Now, here, when we say scientists, it is not scientists as in science. Yeah, It is scientists as in the technology-based scientists, uh, which are in the areas of uh, AI and data science. Yeah, So at APU, we have ensured that we offer uh, feeder courses, uh, basically uh, into graduating a student uh, fit for purpose into the industry. So later on, we'll share some of the courses that we have that address AI and also uh, data science. Uh, for data science, we have the entire spectrum, actually, uh, from diploma in data informatics to uh, computer science in data science and uh, masters uh, in data science and business analytics. And in AI, we obviously have the uh, uh, computer science uh, uh, with intelligent systems and also the masters in AI directly. Uh, Prof. Swan, what, what do we have uh, within these two programs uh, before we go into the, the, the details in terms of what we offer? 
Um, you mean if the specialism side? I mean, uh, we have the BSc, <coughs> the uh, degree program uh, under computer science, which is the intelligence system. Intelligence system, by the way, and AI are the same thing. Uh, yeah, in the masters, then we we call it artificial intelligence. So, uh, students on the basis on the foundation, they have to learn uh, computer science. This is because this is part of part of uh, computer science. So they focus into the intelligence system. Um, then they can progress into uh, developing a artificial intelligence system or intelligence system for their final year project. And if they like to progress it into uh, masters in AI, they can. Um, however, they can also pursue in other areas. But it's, I think it's important to note that for someone who is coming from uh, other specialism in their degree, and they, if they want to choose to go on into AI in uh, masters, that is uh, that is okay as well. I think just now, Prof. Vinish, you mentioned this is a new uh, new area. I would call it is a is a old new area, uh, meaning the call is still on computer science, which we are very good at doing at APU. And this is a uh, I think with the uh, 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 evolutions with the enhancement of the computer science area. Uh, Putting in in all the business need in the market needs um, and what what you uh, in having information in in your hand and making it sensible and it will help you in making your business decision. That's what uh, AI and uh, data science is all about. So it's a it's a branch out from what we already have. That's why I say it's a old new area, but it is very trendy right now. Yeah. 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 Absolutely right. And you know, uh, if I take the overarching representation of uh, IR 4.0, right? You have mm. uh, in the far right corner of the, of, the, of the presentation slide, it says that we have IoT, cybersecurity, data science, fintech, mobile technology, and, and, and robotics. Now, I'm sure you'll go through webinars of all these three niche areas uh, with APU. But today, if I say about AI, right? And I want to take you on what Prof. Son uh, mentioned earlier. AI can dramatically... Uh, improve the efficiencies of our workplace yeah it can augment uh, the work humans can do so when ai actually takes over repetitive and uh, dangerous kind of task it actually frees up the human uh, workforce to do the work that they are better equipped for so tasks that involve creativity and empathy among others uh, are such examples so people if people are going to do going to be doing work that is more engaging for them uh, it could increase happiness and job satisfaction, right? So AI influencing uh, our traffic congestion issues, uh, not to mention the other ways it will improve on the job productivity. Uh, this kind of frees up stressful commutes and humans will be able to spend time in a variety of other ways. So in short, I'm just saying that AI is an enabler and it assists us in working, our, uh, in working towards betterment of our own employment, yeah? So the way we uncover, uh, as a good example, the, the way we uncover uh, criminal activity and solve crimes uh, will be enhanced by AI. And a lot of this, as an example, uh, comes from facial recognition uh, technology, which is now very common, uh, just as common as what we've been doing before in terms of fingerprint and uh, bio uh, uh, recognition. So the AI is in now in the, also in the justice system, it also represents uh, many opportunities to figure out how uh, effectively we can use technology without crossing an individual privacy. So the, a the future of AI is basically it's coupled to the directly uh, uh, to the key areas uh, as shown on the right side of the slide. Those are all the, the niche areas within IR 4.0, but AI presents itself as the overarching representation. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I don't have to go through each of it, but maybe Swan, you can uh, just a short intro on all the uh, topics on the right uh, in, in general of what we uh, have. Yeah, uh, I mean, be uh, before I go into that, I just wanted to add on to what you mentioned earlier on. You know, you're talking about traffic, you're talking about uh, other things to freeze out, uh, to, freeze, um, to, to free human from doing other things. I wanted to highlight that some of the research that is currently being done by our students in both the AI and the data science area. Um, uh, this is on um, studying on uh, cancer, cancer cell. Uh, looking at all the cancerous data that they have collected over the years 
from a lot of patients. And by looking at the uh, cancerous uh, pattern, the cell pattern, and uh, then it can predict uh, other patterns, whether it has got the tendency of uh, getting the uh, such cancer or not. Yeah, so these are some of the uh, already ongoing project and papers that uh, our students on the undergraduate students are actually undertaking. Another one, another example is actually they also do uh, uh, predicting music genre. Uh, depending on the musician, if uh, depending on the genre that the musician is going into, and the prediction is looking into uh, with this kind of a genre, whether you can make it big as a as a as a music star or not. I thought that's really really interesting, and uh, th I did not make this up. This is actually a, a project. Again, it's a paper uh, final year project that student is doing, and with uh, our our staff as the as the supervisor. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So those are those are all uh, between the AI as well as the data science uh, area. Uh, Internet of Things. Um, I think everybody knows. Uh, maybe a lot of you are wearing uh, a smartwatch. So that is that is what we we call Internet of Things. You know that you are able to. Uh, so if you are wearing a smart watch, sometimes it's quite annoying because your smart watch will actually ask you, "It's time to get up to walk." How does it know? All right. So this is again is predicting based on your pattern of your daily uh, work, and then it will tell you, "Yeah, I have been sitting on the chair for too long. Get up and and walk." Uh, must be happening to Prof Finish a lot, so he's laughing. <laughs> uh, cybersecurity, I think this is another hot topic, you know, talking about, um, uh, you know, you have to be a hacker to be able to protect as well. Uh, so on how do you make sure that your system is uh, secure or whether you're able to penetrate other systems as well uh, or not. Uh, data science, I think, with AI is very interrelated, or rather AI is actually being used in all this area. Data science is just looking at making sense of data. Making sense of a massive data that you are that you are receiving. Uh, going back to the all the example that we have spoken about, Profinish and, and I, on either a cancerous cell, on all this. Instead of a human studying it in manually, you take forever. But now, yeah, the the, the computer can mimic on how human uh, uh, look at the patterns and intelligent intelligently predict the outcome. Yeah. Uh, fintech is the uh, finance uh, plus technology, I believe. Yeah, so you are looking into using uh, the technology in uh, finance, money, making money. If you know which uh, share is uh, coming up tomorrow, uh, if only by looking at the trends, looking at the data, the historical data of each of the share in the share market, and based on that, you can predict which one is going to coming is going to come up. I think it's a uh, uh, everyone is investing in a little bit of a uh, cryptocurrency right now. So if you know XRP is going down before it comes up, you, maybe you can invest into that. So that's just part of it. I'm just scratching the very rest of the face. Yeah, uh, mobile technology. Um, we mobile technology is actually getting very very popular, including games. When we talk about games, uh, yeah, I'm also uh, into games. Uh, when you talk about games, the mobile games are more popular. Why? Because you can just play on the phone and on the go at all time. Even now, if I'm Talking to you, I may be playing my games. You may or may not know. Yeah. So mobile technology, uh, beside the smartwatch that I talked about, um, uh, or all your tablets, all your small devices that you bring uh, with you, uh, wearable watch. Wearable, wearable watch is really like wearing a little computer on your wrist. So it's amazing on what, what they can do. Yeah. Uh, monitoring your health, monitoring your diet, your, your food intake. Uh, it can even tell you that you have already over overused your calories today, so stop eating now. Yeah, that, that kind of stuff. Uh, and robotics, I think robotics is uh, very very useful in terms on some of the dangerous work or some of the mundane work. You know where you use robot to to do it rather than um, uh, using human being uh, to do it. Uh, those repetitive, high risk or very daily kind of operation work. Uh, I think Prof Finish is very well versed in the robotic areas. Maybe he can add a few more points. Yeah. Sure. Um, I'll add more. That, that's brilliant, Swan. You actually covered a lot of usable uh, AI functions within the niche areas of AI, IR 4.0. Uh, where are we heading with this? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's 1.8 billion uh, AI functionals or functions uh, by end of this year. And that's tremendous, yeah. Seventy-two percent of business leaders are saying already that AI is an advantage. 
because it's the business advantage. So the statistics that we are showing on the screen is sort of the goals that AI is producing and achieving as an outcome for business operations. Yeah? And it will only get better because as more people move into AI, more development will happen. And a lot of this will improve different industries uh, that is out there. Let me share with you some of the industries, right? So these are AI applications in the industry. And, and Prof. One shared a lot of usability and functional uh, applications uh, in the form of AI within the niche IR 4.0 uh, areas. But let me go uh, deeper dive into the uh, each specific industry. So if I take manufacturing, right? So managing an unexpected uh, scenario is a constant challenge in manufacturing. So as traditional approaches, we use Six Sigma, we use uh, line level uh, reporting, uh, we use MES systems. Now, these are no longer sufficient uh, to gain insights from data, uh, even though you're extracting data, to improve decision making. So manufacturing industry is constantly finding new ways to harness the value of industrial data, uh, which is essential to enable uh, modern factories uh, to manage uh, three areas, the three Vs, right? Uh, data volume, velocity, and variety. And AI helps them in doing that. Now, the other part about AI, and we did mention just now, is visual inspection. Yeah. So computer vision uh, uh, is something that uh, is very prominent now in the industry. Because of the amount of cameras that are out there and how efficient these cameras are, computer vision becomes an asset. So if I give you an example, right, there's a company called Landing AI. So what does Landing AI do? Uh, they basically have produced a system that recognizes patterns in imperfection after viewing only five product images. Yeah. So they take an image from five different angles and they can detect patterns of imperfections. Yeah. Uh, so this visual inspection system uh, doesn't depend uh, on AI uh, alone. Uh, it must be trained with massive data sets uh, of around 1 million images yeah, uh, to ensure that they recognize all potential imperfection. Uh, I know uh, some time back, uh, we worked on a project uh, with our students to detect imperfection of a plate of uh, uh, a meal on a plate for a hotel industry. So uh, what is uh, portrayed in, a, in, a, in an image, in a, in a sort of a menu, uh, and, a and when people order room service and when that uh, plate gets delivered, what is actually on the plate must replicate 100% of the image which is in the menu. And that hotel was using uh, uh, image recognition, yeah, visual inspection, uh, to detect whether the plate gets a go to leave the kitchen. Now, that's simple uh, for manufacturing uh, and visual inspection. Uh, now we move on to telco. That's a big industry uh, because as Prof Swan said earlier, we use mobile phones, right? We use mobile phones for everything. Uh, I wake up in the morning and the first thing that wakes me up is my mobile phone with the alarm clock. I go to bed, I watch a few things, I read a few things. Uh, it's all on, uh, on my mobile. But no longer uh, is the mobile industry or the telco industry uh, limited to providing just basic phone and internet services, yeah? Uh, it is now the epicenter of technolo technological growth uh, led by mobile and broadband services within now uh, the IR 4.0 area. Uh, this is expected to continue uh, and TechnoVio, uh, which is a, a statistics uh, a company, has predicted that the global telecom IoT market will pose an impressive uh, uh, CAGR of more than 42%. Uh, by the end of this year. Now, what is driving that? That is being driven by AI. There's a lot of things within the AI uh, infrastructure that supports uh, telco. Uh, one of it is cloud management, uh, which analyzes private cloud telemetry uh, storage and also uses it for capacity planning, upgrades, and general management. So a lot of the, uh, the telco companies in Malaysia uh, are also doing the same thing. Uh, what they do, they use AI uh, to sort of uh, optimize their network uh, based on the growing number of 
uh, of customers. Yeah, so the number of customers uh, is is growing. Uh, to tell you the truth, uh, Malaysia's smartphone usage, just Malaysia as an example, yeah, smartphone usage, believe it or not, is eighty seven percent, and that is tremendously high. Yeah. Uh, the highest, isn't it? Yeah, and and to think that we are in uh, in in uh, MCO at this moment, and I was shocked with those uh, with those rates because I did not know those rates were that high, which means that eighty seven percent of the population actually have smartphones, and that's tremendous. Now another area, as mentioned by Prof Sanders now, uh, in terms of uh, cancer cancer cell detection, yeah? uh, healthcare is a, a big area where AI is coming into use. Uh, it is. Doctors are using AI enhanced microscopes uh, to scan for harmful bacteria like E. coli and, and, and as such in blood samples at a faster rate than it is possible for usual manual scan scanning. So scientists are using like 25,000 images of different blood samples to teach machines how to search for bacteria. And I think this is one of the reasons, I, I don't want to be quoted for this, I think AI is one of the reasons why we came up with the uh, the uh, first uh, level of or first round of vaccines because AI actually sped up or expedited uh, the the manual scanning uh, to find bacteria or the virus itself. Yeah, and they have now reached a, a, a prediction uh, rate of ninety five percent accuracy, which is pretty good. Yeah, uh, there's a company called Analytic. Yeah. Uh, it's an AI company that develops deep learning medical tools to streamline radiology diagnosis. So what the company does is it uses deep learning platform analysis uh, on unstructured medical data. Uh, this unstructured uh, medical data is like radiology images, uh, blood tests, EKGs, uh, genomics, uh, patient medical history uh, to give doctors a better insight into patients' real-time needs. Yeah, uh, There's another company called Burke. Uh, they are, I think you spell it as B-E-R-G. -E uh, it uses uh, a biotech platform that maps diseases to accelerate the discovery and development of breakthrough medication. So what it does is it combines uh, interrogative uh, biology approaches uh, with traditional R&D and they can uh, sort of develop a more robust product candidates uh, that can fight uh, rare diseases. And that's in, in scientific research uh, uh, perspective. Yeah? So you see, healthcare is another big area, and I've given you some good examples. Yeah? And if I follow through to the next year of heavy uh, usages of AI, it's another area that is now coming in. And people don't believe this, right? They say that AI cannot fit into finance. Finance is all about numbers. You have accountants uh, jumping onto numbers. You have computational tools. That's okay. That's enough. But actually, AI in, in finance is transforming the way we interact with money. And Prof Swan talked about cryptocurrency and how crypto has taken the world by storm over the last two years. Yeah? Now, AI is helping the financial industry to streamline and optimize processes ranging from credit decisions to quantitative trading. I love trading. Yeah? And financial risk management. These are the three important elements in finance. Uh, how to basically... Uh, uh, deal with your credits yeah, and how to trade and what are the risk factors involved. Now, credit is king. We all know credit is king. Uh, a recent study has found out that about 77 consumers uh, prefer paying with a debit or a credit card uh, compared to only 12% who favored cash. Hmm. That's And now with the mobile e-wallets, this is even further taking it to the next generation of cashless systems. Yeah. But easier payment options isn't the only reason uh, for the availability of credit. Yeah, it goes beyond that. So let me give you a good example. There's a company called Zest Finance. Uh, they are a maker of this, uh, this tool called Zest Automated Machine Learning. Uh, it's a platform. It's an AI-powered underwriting solution that helps companies uh, assess borrowers with little to no credit information or history. So there's no more looking at you know, your, your, your paycheck, your, your, your EPF statement or, or your tax income uh, details, there is enough machine learning uh, or deep learning uh, powered by AI to even do a screen check before you even come to a face-to-face -face scenario. And that's what Zest Finance is doing. Yeah? And that's 
an example of what the industry is moving and shaking into uh, because these are future jobs. Uh, the last one, uh, before I go on, I just want to uh, focus on retail because everyone loves retail, right? Uh, and that's that's where a lot of the youth are engaging with. And before the uh, COVID-19 hit, con consumer expectations were already changing and creating challenges in the retail industry. Uh, intelligence stores were going into assortment of applications for various user cases, yeah? Uh, using video analytics, uh, using uh, distributed infrastructure for deploying multiple apps uh, on the same server at each store. Uh, if I touch on video analytics, video analytics can be deployed for asset protection at self-checkouts at kiosks, right? Uh, and to monitor employer or employee, sorry, employee theft. So for an average retailer, uh, the loss of inventory is about 1.5 to 2% of their revenue. Now, we're not talking about just CCTVs, right? We're using AI-based uh, functions uh, that can actually help you reduce your costs up to 2%. Yeah, and this can be added into the bottom line with the help of AI. Yeah. Okay, the last area, uh, Prof. Swan, I want to cover is government. Uh, it is brilliant that government services are now moving into uh, ICT and a lot of them uh, have got remote uh, applications or even online applications uh, that actually serve the purpose of us not going to a counter. And, and moreover, at this point in time in the pandemic, we have had that opportunity. Uh, but these kind of models, right, uh, are, are always there. So I want to give you, uh, if I give you an interesting government sector, right, uh, and one agency uh, in the government or defense is our PDRM. So our police force, right, and the National ICT Agency uh, uh, have teamed up to create a surveillance system in prisons that can detect and predict inmates' aggressive behavior. So they can predict before someone is going to cause harm, someone is going to do an escape attempt. And, and these systems also take note of the behavior, behavior of the police guards who are on duty to protect the inmates. So they also protect the inmates from maltreatment. So once triggered, the system can alert officers on duty and direct them to the potential breach. So you see smart AI applications within the prison sector or within the police force. And this is great. And, and these are six sectors which I've just given you examples of. Now, career opportunities. Prof. Swan, you've got mm -hmm. students coming in, they spend mm -hmm. three years, they get out. What are the new rewarding careers? Um, I mean, you can see on the slide, you know, there can be the um, AI engineer, machine learning engineer. Machine learning, I think Prof. Uh, early on touched on deep learning and, and whatnot. Um, and uh, the more the machine learn, the smarter yeah. they will become. So the, the more they learn, meaning if you feed them more data, so they have got more data, uh, a bigger uh, a pool of data to analyze, and they can actually learn by itself. The machine can learn by itself so that's also part of it so it's really that's why it's called intelligent you know so it's artificial because we make it uh, intelligent uh you can be the robot ro robotic scientist i think in the future by the time you join us first year by the time you graduate in the third year final year the fourth year when you go out to look for a job i think this title will change uh but these are the areas that you can go into i mean from the six areas that uh, prof Inish has mentioned earlier on I think the world is moving towards a seamless, um, a seamless uh, platform where everything is uh, everything meaning all the information is just within the fingertips, and we can actually make better decision and lead a better life. Hopefully, yeah. So these are just some of the uh, put, uh, some of the uh, examples of the job titles that you can go into. I mean, my students, I came across so many students when we tell them this. And very, very often when they graduate, I ask them, what are you doing now? They Very often they throw me a, a, a term that I'll be like, wow, that's a new term in the, in the market. So I think the, the market, the, the industry, the uh, IT is especially is changing uh, very rapidly. Uh, I think what we need to do is just to keep up. Yeah, okay? That's absolutely true. I mean, we don't know the jobs of tomorrow, but we know for sure the jobs of the last decade are changing rapidly. And what we've shown you is jobs that are there now but these can change even next year. But the fundamental is AI and data science are a way forward for future jobs, yeah? yeah. Uh, so, 
And these are further uh, opportunities uh, within the sector of AI and data science. As you can see, uh, there's the, the AI specialists, there's AI and analytics combined for software engineers, there's data analytics, there are algorithm, uh, algorithmic uh, engineers and things like that, uh, digital signal process engineers, uh, a, a very good uh, field right now in a, in, a very, in, a, in a very general manner is AI engineers. And that's quite surprising. And, and it's, it's actually taking a massive uh, quantum leap uh, in the industry where actually companies are giving this recognition or these job titles. Yeah? Uh, let's move on to data science yeah? and how data science becomes an impact uh, in terms of a subset towards AI. So we know data science uh, uh, is a skilled professional uh, job uh, uh, in the market now. It's actually a profession, yeah? It's not just a, 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 a secondary uh, job function within the areas of computer science or software engineering. It is actually a, a job title and a profession by itself, just like a lawyer, engineer, uh, computer scientist, yeah? Uh, but this expertise, right, allows one to quickly shift roles. Yeah, you can switch roles at any point in the life cycle of a data science project. And you and a person uh, with a data science qualification can work with AI and machine learning with equal ease. They all are subsets yeah, of the complete AI uh, functional role. So machine learning for predictive reporting uh, data science use machine learning algorithms uh, to study transactional data uh, to make valuable predictions. So data science is all about predictions, yeah? But it is also known as supervised learning. This machine learning is also known as supervised learning uh, where the model that is created can be implemented to suggest the most effective courses of action based on the prediction for any organization. So machine learning for pattern discovery, we talked about pattern discovery earlier or pattern recognition, yeah? So pattern discovery is important uh, for, for many areas, yeah? Uh, similarly to what I talked about in healthcare, it is very important uh, in terms of the area of, uh, of data science uh, because what it does is basically gives you uh, the unsupervised learning where there is no pre-decided parameters, yeah? So the most popular algorithm used for pattern discovery is actually clustering. Uh, these are all jargons and buzzwords that you will learn when you come on board our program. And I know me and Prof Sun, we, we, we struggle with buzzwords. Yeah? And I was in a seminar yesterday where I said, I'm struggling with buzzwords because I'm getting bombarded with it every week. <laughs> uh, but it excites me because these are all very sexy, if you ask me, uh, in terms of the profession itself. Right. Now we go into the programs that we have uh, and the job title, yeah? And, and Prof Swan, these are where our graduates are going into, yeah? And, and a good example is data scientists and these are some of the elements that or criteria that we need. You wanna tell the audience a little bit more about this? Yeah, well, um, if you want to become a data scientist, um, to make it to, to, if I were to put it into one uh, statement, you have to see sense in a mass of data. I mean, you see all this data in there, you'll be able to make sense out of it. Some people can do it. You know, they can see uh, the, the, uh, how organized it is from the messiness. Uh, so if you look at it, it's uh, wrangling data, you will be uh, managing the data, visualization and data storytelling, meaning you can visualize what this data mean and able to say, uh, uh, piece out all the uh, uh, story and make a story out of it. Yeah, so you will be using, um, like going back to the earlier diagram um, that Prof. Vinish has mentioned. So data scientists will rely, AI will rely on uh, deep machine learning, all this like a tool for them to pull out the data and then look at the presentation of the data on the visual of the data and able to tell you a story. Okay, just like if I collect a data about Prof. Vinish now, I look at his face, I look at the way he speaks, then maybe I can tell him uh, what, sleepy. Most, <laughs> <laughs> or what, what, what he will be, uh, what is his state of mind currently? Maybe hungry because it's, because it's 12 30, 12 40. Yeah, so you're correct. Your prediction uh, is correct. <laughs> <laughs> come join our course that you can, you'll be able to do that. I mean, joke aside, 
um, I think this data scientists or this, this techniques can be used in uh, psychology as well. I think psychology students can benefit from this, collecting on uh, patient data, uh, background, uh, upbringing, education um, exposure. Uh, then you can write a story about that person. No? Yeah? So, yeah. So this is the outcome. But what you need to learn is you, you learn, because this is a computer science course, uh, it's IT, it's computer, uh, computer science. So you need to pick up programming languages, uh, Python, R programming, SQL. Uh, obviously, these are the, very, these are the uh, current programming languages that are being used out there in the industry. So by the time you graduate, you may, be, uh, learn, you may need to learn new programming language. And I hope that we will have been able to equip you to be able to learn uh, different languages, yeah? So uh, if you look at the, what is the display here, so these are some of the um, uh, modules. These are some of the areas that you'll be learning, uh, a lot of technical terms here. Uh, but you know that you have to, you have to like uh, uh, a little bit of data. You need to have a bit of logical thinking for all the computer science uh, programs anyway. Yeah, so these are, these are not... Um, these are not subjective. These are all very scientific uh, kind of program. Yeah. So uh, creative and intense curiosity. I think Prof. Uni said earlier on, you know, you look at all this jargon, you get very, uh, you may get very, uh, uh, it all in your face, very bombarded with all this work, but yet he's very excited over it because of the outcome, because of what it can, it can do in predicting and uh, looking at the patterns and can you can tell as i say it's like a fortune teller you'll be able to tell where the market is moving into yeah so that's a uh, data scientist yep yeah then the next one uh mm. we've got five uh, to show you where uh data scientists uh, uh how they actually move into the industry in terms of a job function or a job title so the first one yeah. is data scientist next one is a data engineer Data engineer will be the, you know, the word engineer. So they work at the, I don't want to say background. Uh, I don't want to say back end as well. But there was the people who will get their hands dirty with the data. There will be the one who write algorithm. There will be one to, to look at capturing the data, storing them, and then process that data. So they will be the, uh, uh, the engineer that will pull out all the data. Uh, although we have got five, five titles here to, to just let you know. But these are all, uh, they are all interconnected. So a data scientist, later on, you can be a data engineer. A data engineer can be a data scientist as well. Uh, you are coming out from the same degree per se, but you can, you have different specialism. All right, so um, it's not def, def, definitive. It's not definite that data engineer cannot do a data scientist job. It just depends on what you like to do. So data engineer, I think, is a bit of a, you know, you, you just immerse yourself into the, into the uh, data itself and then apply some of the technical uh methods in order to pull the data out with the push and pull technology again yeah all right and so you still do the programming the data analyst, isn't it yeah the next one based. is the data analyst yeah so data analyst based on the data engineer giving you the data so now you can actually do a, a, a little bit more work into that so data scientist is a bit on the outer layer all this have been done then you can piece them together and apply it yeah so i think next one is actually a business analyst if i'm not mistaken um i thought that uh all right a business analyst means there will people who will actually look into the need of that business itself and then uh, recommend which data to be used in fact as the lecturer the ac academic team we can do the same based on the students achievement based on the students uh result on the previous semester based on the result that we got for your spm we can also predict we can also put you put student in the group that these are the special students which we should pay extra attention to push them into excellent excellent student or these are the students who are a little bit more of a we call them a high risk student we need to give a little bit more provide assistance in order to pull them along to to uh, to achieve better result so yeah. we, we also use those kind of uh, data in in the uh, you know uh, it's called analytic uh, teaching and learning so based on the need of the students individually we can then provide different teaching method and learning method Okay, yeah. so yeah. That was a good introduction to three of the job functions. Actually, there are five, right? So if I, if I take Prof Swan's uh, uh, in-depth explanation, you, you study data science, but you actually go into five different roles of your own choice. You, you have that liberty because the curriculums at APU are broad. They are, the depth and breadth is broader and deeper 
than any other university. So you you, co- you come up with a data science degree, uh, which is clubbed with a computer science uh, mother degree, for example. Uh, that specialism takes you into uh, a, a data scientist as a role, or you can go as into a role as a data miner. You can oh. go into a role as a data engineer. You can be a data analyst as shown on the screen right now, or you can also become a business analyst. So it, it's a, a wide role. And these roles are actually, uh, truth be told, it is the entire data science journey of a project. So if you're working on a real project, right, you start from as a data engineer and you slowly move on to the business analyst. And that is the journey of data science, for ex- uh, as an example, in a, in a very summarized form. Yeah? Now, let us move on to data science and AI engineering, and how it actually goes into functionals uh, in terms of functions in the industry. So earlier I showed you six different functions in in, in uh, AI applications. Uh, now I'm going to talk about applications of data science in the industry. And let me start with the first one, which is interesting because we're not doing enough of it for the last uh, 15 months, which not is doing travel. It all. <laughs> not doing zero travel. I'm very sad. I'm very sad. Very sad. Very sad. If I take 2019 against 2020 and 2021, my graph is going downwards. Yeah. Uh, and I, but let us still show you. Yeah? I want to show you how, how impactful uh, data science is. So, in data science, we have something called sentiment analysis. Yeah, so sentiment analysis is a branch of unsupervised learning aimed at uh, analyzing textual data and recognizing emotional elements uh, within the, the text itself. So you could be, it could be an email, it could be a text message, it could, have, it could be a WhatsApp message, it doesn't matter. Anything in a text form, uh, it can be uh, used in the sentiment analysis uh, that allows any comp- company or organization owner uh, or service provider for that matter to learn about the attitude and the behavior of the customer towards their brand, right? So in the travel industry, uh, customers review uh, plays a huge role. Uh, travelers often read reviews posted on various web platforms or websites uh, and make decisions based on, on that reviews, yeah? That is why a lot of modern uh, booking websites, yeah, uh, booking.com, uh, Agora, uh, things like that, right? They, they actually uh, offer sentiment analysis as part of their service package for those travel agencies, uh, hotels and, and uh, backpacking hostels uh, who want to cooperate with them. Because based on the sentiment analysis, you can now do dynamic pricing, you can do shift in offers, right? So that's a very important uh, uh, element, yeah? Uh, what we call a sentiment analysis. And that's a big area because it involves brands. The entire retail industry is based on sentiment analysis as we speak. Now, there's another area where we, we've covered healthcare in, 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 in AI. I want to touch on... Uh, an area which is quite interesting and it's called insurance yeah uh, in insurance uh, which a lot of us have yeah so you either have it for medical or you have it for education or you have it for your cars yeah uh, and 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 so many different uh, uh, offers in insurance yeah uh, what insurance companies do they they actually do predictive modeling uh, that has a myriad of uh, applications in the in the, in the insurance industry, and these include uh, optimizing customer acquisition, so hopping uh, or hoping for a customer to hop from one insurance agency to another. Uh, they deliver personalized services. Uh, they can process your claims efficiently. Uh, they do intelligent underwriting policies. Uh, they can, most importantly, now uh, what's going on in insurance is detecting fraud uh, more effectively. So the common ingredient to build and train uh, these predictive mod- models, right, is basically uh, operational and business data. So they have your data because if you're a client of that insurance uh, agency or company, they have your data and they can use that data to do a lot of prediction. Yeah. Now, internal and external sources are what 
uh, the data is coming from. Yeah. So one person sitting next to you at a conference or at a at a say a, a concert for that matter, right? Uh, if the company works uh, in a in a sort of a data hunter uh, company, uh, that person can actually now get to know you better if you can share just your name with that person. And then somehow rather they can actually uh, have enough data at the back end to know your insurance details. So basically this is a nutshell, it's called business intelligence, right? So business intelligence is very important uh, in the whole segment of AI and data science. And we have done a lot. Uh, what I show you on the screen right now is an integration of so many different uh, industries yeah, uh, that actually use data science in a big way. They use AI functions to, to garner data, to improve customer uh, services. So I, I want to share with you a, a, a very simple uh, uh, example. So everyone drinks Coca-Cola, right? Maybe if you don't, you drink Pepsi, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but the, but the Coca-Cola bottling company, right? Uh, if you didn't know, Coca-Cola bottling company is called CCBC, right? Uh, it is the uh, largest Coca-Cola independent uh, bottling partner. Yeah. So the bottling company is a subsidiary uh, to the uh, prime mother company, right? Now, how did CCBC uh, maximize its operational efficiency is very interesting because they had one problem. Like, like days before, they used to always do manual reporting processes. Uh, but the reason for that is because they were restricted to uh, real-time uh, sales data and operation data. So what Coca-Cola's uh, business intelligence team uh, did yeah, uh, is they went to the part of using BI platform. So they developed a BI. BI stands for Business Intelligence Platform, which now allowed for the entire reporting processes to be automated. Now, the impact from this is that they save about 260 hours a year uh, and more than six 40-hour uh, working weeks. That's what it equates to. And that's a lot of resources, energy, time, and cost, right? So what the reporting does is that uh, it reports on uh, automation and other enterprise systems, which is now integrated to the CRM, which is the Customer Relationship Management uh, system as well. So they get data uh, into their hands and they pass it on uh, uh, from the sales team uh, who are on the field, right? And they have this mobile dashboard that can provide real-time uh, actionable uh, information. And now they have become more distinctive in terms of uh, a competitive uh, advantage. So this uh, self-service BI implementation has now fostered a collaboration between the IT sector and the business uh, users uh, in terms of expertise of usage here. Yeah? And it has brought together two departments within an organization to serve uh, a business outcome enhancement. Uh, and this is great. So this is what CCBC did, right? And, and another good example, we have time, uh, so maybe we can take another good example. Uh, there is this restaurant, and restaurants are interesting, right? You think restaurants don't use data science or AI. You think AI in a restaurant is the iPad that comes to you and uh, or the tablet that comes to you and you order your food. Yeah, that is uh, a small scale of AI. But <laughs> it is actually bigger than that, yeah? Unfortunately, we can't go to restaurants <laughs> today right uh, to have a dine-in. But I'm sure in the future, uh, Prof. Swan will go back to restaurants. I hope so, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but a good example is, and I want to give you an international example, right? Is Chipotle, right? So Chipotle is, uh, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, yeah, it's a Mexican restaurant. Uh, and what it did was it unified its view on, on its own restaurant operations because it's got a lot of franchises, right? Uh, the problem they had was the disparation or the disparity uh, between data sources uh, that was not unified from the different outlets that they had, right? So there's a large disparity. So what Chipotle Mexican Grill, uh, which is an American uh, restaurant chain with 2,400 locations worldwide, uh, 2,400 madness, that's 
tremendous. They retired their traditional BI solution and they went for a self-service BI platform. This allowed them to sort of create a, a centralized view on operations that can track each franchise, each location uh, on an operational hourly basis, right? And at a national scale. So now the staff, uh, the backend staff, right? We call them the, the smart engineers behind the scene, right? They, they have access to all the data. The speed of reporting uh, for strategic projects has tripled from quarterly. They used to do it four times a year. Now they're doing it monthly and they have saved thousands of hours. And they all uh, summarize this as this was the BI uh, enhanced platform. Yeah, This was the ticket to take all metrics and understanding uh, the next level of enhancements for business outcomes. So they did this. So uh, another example is now uh, uh, basically using BI platforms, which is a combination of data science and AI uh, to power yourself uh, in terms of uh, business outcomes and to unify 2,400 locations of restaurants. Yeah. And, and that's, uh, that's a big, big, big uh, shift in your business operations. That's a lot of examples I hope today. Uh, oh, there comes the business analyst, uh, analyst yeah. slide. Uh, yeah. And this is the business analyst uh, that we talked about. And the next one is the BI, uh, which I just talked about, which is yeah. the business intelligence uh, and like, analyst yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, maybe we can move on to the N, uh, which is business intelligence, which I just talked about in yeah. terms of Chippertail, the restaurant. I skipped a few slides there. I'm, I'm very sorry, but I'm so excited about today's talk. And yeah. uh, we come to the, uh, <laughs> to the end, Prof Swan. Uh, and uh, maybe uh, a few words from yourself uh, in terms of what do you think uh, from a, for, you hit the school that runs all these programs. What is your wish uh, for the coming year, uh, for the next six months into 2022 for students that are coming into our data science and AI programs? Yeah, my wish is like, I think I said early on, you know, I think we are moving in towards a seamless world. Uh, where we can do things more uh, efficiently, uh, effectively. And um, I mean, now the fact that we are doing online teaching, um, again, uh, the, the slides, the, the, the where the methods, we are fine tuning and, and all this, then we can free up to do uh, other things, which is uh, a bit more uh, meaningful. And I hope our students will come in, uh, who can then become the data scientists, become the BI analysts, and go out there and um, spread all this to to the entire world. I think I think we are the very first university who started uh, data science as one of the specialism and and also one of the university who started from the diploma all the way to uh, to master's level. Yeah. So my wish is of course to see our students to be able to go out there to help. Uh, businesses to help the well to help the world to achieve better better result, so we can live in a better, more uh, seamless world. Yeah, that too big a wish. Yeah? No, I think that's a that's a well coordinated and strategized wish. <laughs> I think it works well for the for the incoming students and and our wish for APU as well. Uh, I like to add to that, and I want to say uh, something about uh, the jobs in demand. Yeah, so. If you take AI as an overarching, uh, if we take it as an overarching uh, uh, reflection and you take data science as a subset, uh, let me give you some of the, the statistics here. So these are statistics on growth uh, for the last five years. So you talk about 2016, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Yeah, uh, These five years, uh, these are the top four uh, biggest shifters uh, within the AI segment. So you have machine learning engineers. Uh, this has grown by 344%. That's massive. You have a robotics engineer, uh, uh, which covers engineering and also uh, computing. That has shifted and to an increase of 128%. Uh, you have computer vision engineers, as we, we spoke a lot about computer vision and pattern recognition. That has increased by 116%. And data scientists has increased by 78%. Now, these are tremendous figures uh, of jobs. And we are talking about skills for the future and jobs which are available in the market. And this is data over the next five years. And this will continuously increase as business operations continue 
uh, increases as well. So, so I think both uh, Prof. Swan and myself, uh, we're going to agree that with one last statement. Come and study at APU. Uh, we are pioneers in AI and data science education. Nothing beats us from infrastructure to expertise to the type of content, the skills and knowledge, software, hardware, you name it, we have it all. I think that's the theme of the our song as well. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, at this point in time, uh, we, we we are happy to take on questions. Yeah, uh, if you have any, uh, maybe I should bring on Ryan Beck's one. Uh, Ryan. Yeah, Ryan. Hi. Okay, we got a question just now asking about the syllabus of you know AI program at APU, like basically what we'll be covering. You want to take this one? Sure. Okay. Um, I think we did briefly mention, um, uh, in case we are not able to give you the details, you can go on to our website. I think all the modules are listed there. Yeah, first year you do the you do some programming uh, languages. You do a little bit of a common across all programs kind of module, university-wide module. Uh, then second year, depending on your specialism, then you will go into, uh, you know, you, you do modules like introduction to artificial intelligence. Uh, uh, you do uh, algorithm because those are the important ingredient uh, for, for uh, data science and as well as AI. And final year is the crucial one where you will then produce a final year project. That's an individual project. Depending on, again, on your specialism, your final year project will scope around uh, that area. Uh, each year, you will have about uh, 10 to 12 modules to, to do. So um, first year, second year, first year is 10. Yeah, I, if I'm not mistaken, 10. Second year, you have about 12 modules to do. And then final year, of course, your final year project will take up uh, one third of your entire degree. Yeah, so um, also please, please bear in mind that we also uh, upgrade our syllabus uh, very frequently in order to fulfill to to keep us up to date with the technology changes as well but the basic thing is you have to do programming because those are also the new area for spm student and you have to do uh, mathematics as well this mathematics is different from your spm mathematics but it's a thinking it's a thinking process so if you are someone who is logical or someone who 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 go through step by step uh, kind of a, a, a procedural uh, thing, then this course is, is for you, okay? But as I say, I think I didn't give you all the details. Uh, do refer to our website. Our website provide uh, a lot of details on that. Yeah? Okay. So besides, sorry, besides syllabus, of course, you learn other skills as well, like team, mm. team working together, interpersonal skill, communication skills, and all those all being embedded into the syllabus. Those are the important ones, actually. actually. Yeah. Sorry, Ryan, back to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think it's a very good explanation to cover like, basically the whole thing about what you're going to study at APU, you know, whether you're in AI or even in other computing program. I mean, we, we not just teach you about the the skills of programming or what, but of course to train you to become a professional, I believe. Right. Uh there's uh uh just one question probably from my side because I, I think uh, some of our uh, participants who are watching this live stream, they are probably a parents or even working adults. So I believe they may not have, you know, learned about AI or data science during their university time. So if let's say, you know, uh, do you have any advice for uh, any of these participants? You know, let's say if they don't want to you know, look into AI or data science uh, career. They, you mean they don't want to? No, they, 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 want say, to. Uh, they want to, but they don't have any knowledge or skill about that, what what they can do, maybe. Uh, doesn't matter. I mean, the course teach from the scratch, from the beginning. We, we assume students come without any knowledge in this area. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's the assumption. So if they come with some knowledge, that will be the advantage. So we are not expecting students to have already gotten the knowledge in the AI area. Yeah, so uh, earlier on, I talked about interest. So I think it's more important that they have the interest in this area. Uh, interest as in, uh, we also said this is, uh, this is programming. So this is a little bit more on the, on the science uh, area kind of a, a program. So if they are interested in that kind of area, mm. if they have the interest, then they will be able to do it. And our, our academic uh, team will, will guide them from the beginning, from scratch, from zero, zero ground onwards. Mm. 
to make them into professional when they graduate. Yeah. Okay. So I don't think, have to worry. Mm. All right. There's uh one question that I always get is that uh students are worried that if they are not you know uh very strong in mathematics, will it be difficult for them if they study in AI or data science? Uh, if they are not strong, then they will have to put in more efforts. Yeah, so they, they will have to put in more efforts. Uh, we are here to assist. We are here to provide different methods, different different ways of learning. Uh, the bottom line is they are willing to put in some efforts. Uh, they'll be they are willing to put in some some uh hard work into it. Then that should be fine. Yeah, yep. yeah. I think yeah. So uh, I think that's all for today. Thank you so much, Provinesh, and thank you so much, uh, so much, Miss Swan. No problem. Okay, thank you, Ryan. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you everybody. Everyone have a good weekend. Don't forget to join APU. We are the best. We are the best. We are the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do do come into our e open day. Uh, you can uh, look for either Provinesh or myself or both of us to further explain uh, all the courses to you. We are, we'll be more than happy to do so. Uh, oh, yeah? there, there's one question just come in. Mm. Uh, it's asking about what's the difference of you know computer science programming and data science taught at APU. I think probably uh, I think the general computer science and the specialism mm. what are the differences? Yeah. So programming. Sorry, uh, Prof. Inish, I I shall answer this. No, go question. ahead, please, please go yeah. ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So when you say programming, programming exists in all computer programs, every single one of it. Yeah, because that's the core of uh, of uh, main thing in all the computing program either technology or computer uh, IT or you have to learn programming computer science is the uh, main degree where data science is being parked as a specialism so I always use this as an example using food is that you're eating nasi lemak nasi lemak is your base you have your samba you have your ikan bilis you have your or uh, kacang and rice as your base but whether you want to eat it with uh, uh, rendang or you want to eat it with a vegetarian nasi lemak that's the specialism that you go into so data science is one of the specialism in there yeah so if a student's coming from computer science with no specialism and graduated the student potentially potentially can be a data scientist as well as compared to someone who come out from computer science specializing in data science but of course, when you go for your first job, if Prof. Inish is your is their potential boss, he look at your cert, he look at one, one candidate is computer science, one candidate is computer science with data science as a specialism, and it just happened that he's looking for data scientists. Obviously, he will take a look at the data science specialism candidate a little bit more. Yeah, but this computer science student may have been able to prove themselves. Uh, Capability-wise, they can do no problem they are able to do that remember i said the base you know if you know how to make nasi lemak you know how to make nasi lemak with vegetarian or curry chicken or rendang you can that that's the base of it then you just it's a different flavor different specialism that you're going for so if you're not sure what to choose you can also do a reverse engineering think about what are the jobs that you want to go into and what lead you to that job so you want to be a data scientist it's very clear you should do a computer science uh, data science specialism so uh, the base is the same but the flavor the specialism is different so there will be modules which is different in second year and the final year the first year is common common means all the computing students will do the same modules i hope i answer your question tony uh tony if you need more details then you can always contact us either one of us here yeah, yeah. You, can, uh, you can also go to our website for the e-open day our counselor will be there to guide you through also yeah okay. all right uh one i think we take one last question uh any minimum requirement in terms of equipment or software or tools for students like what what they should prepare before they join the class <laughs> don't prepare anything yet <laughs> come to the class <laughs> Uh, then uh, then start to talk to different lecturers uh, because different lectures will give you different opinions as well. Then you take a look at it and see uh, what you need. Because I think uh, equipment, laptop, desktop, tablet, PC, all these are very affordable nowadays. And a lot of varieties out there, a lot of brands, you can build uh, a unit from, from scratch on your own. Some people prefer uh, uh, iOS like me, myself. 
Uh, some people prefer Windows. Yeah, so you don't have to worry about that yet. Uh, but I, of course, you need one basic one to get online learning right now. Then after into your you know mid semester, you talk to more students, uh, talk to more lecturers. Then you can actually uh, decide on your own. Um, there's no specific per se because uh, as I said, the 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 computer nowadays are pretty advanced. It will be able to handle a lot of things already. A mid-range one uh, will be quite good already. And then it depends on how much you're willing to, to put in. Yeah. Maybe I can add there in terms of the software and the tools. Sure. Uh, so for the software and the tools, right, uh, all the software uh, and tools are hosted by, by APU, which you will get access to. So oh. when you do the science, right, uh, you do about between six to eight uh, core subjects in depth uh, in the data science area. Huh? You will do machine learning, you will do uh, uh, social media analytics, you will do sentiment, uh, no, you'll do NLP, natural language processing. Yeah, You will do introduction to analytics. Uh, you will do uh, uh, things like deep learning. Uh, you, will, you will get yourself exposed to uh, uh, optimization uh, and, and multivariate uh, modeling and things like that. So those are all the subjects uh, in, in general. The software, see the programs have been built with partnership with the industry. So we have uh, four pro prominent industries here. Yeah? Uh, the first one that we partnered with uh, back in 2015 was with SAS Institute USA. And uh, all our programs actually, uh, uh, when, you, when you finish your degree in data science with us, you get a joint professional certificate from SAS Institute USA. Uh, and some of the content from SAS Institute uh, in, in about four modules is there. Uh, and they have given us the edu version to use of their E-minor software. Uh, then we have TIPCO. Uh, TIPCO uh, Limited is another US-based uh, uh, company which uh, excels in AI and data analytics. We started partnering them in 2018 and they also have content uh, provisions and Again, you can use their software, which is hosted by us. Uh, the third one is uh, FusionX, uh, which is a, a, almost the number one uh, Malaysian company uh, in the area of data science. Yeah? Uh, we have known them for a, a long time as well. And we also started to engage them uh, in 2018, uh, 17, 18, around that period. And we use their uh, uh, software, uh, which is called the Giant, uh, in undergraduate and in diploma level. Uh, and the fourth one, uh, which we are now uh, progressing with, uh, is SkyMine. Yeah. Uh, and uh, a lot of the tech transfer and skills are ongoing. So this SkyMine is another international uh, blockbuster of a company in terms of AI. And uh, we're doing a lot of inroads uh, with SkyMine. So these are four big major organizations that APU is in partnership with. And a lot of other institutions also are, are, are starting to partner them. But we're always first on the on, on the goal, you know. Uh, and uh, we have already produced graduates with the professional certificates and all that. Everyone wants to copy us, but never mind. Copy, copy, <laughs> copy, no problem. But uh, we're always the first and we produce uh, graduates, yeah. We produce graduates who are in the industry at the moment, yeah. Yeah, so I hope that answers the software and tools part. Uh, just to add a bit about the infrastructure, Hafiza and everyone watching, uh, we have uh, our AI studio, which has been built now. Unfortunately, because of the lockdown, there's no accessibility, uh, but that has been built together with our AI partner, which is another company, a fifth company, uh, but, but purely on, uh, on, on uh, uh, tools, hardware, and, uh, and project development. Uh, they are called Superseed. So that's another uh, big thing uh, in AI, uh, where a lot of, uh, uh, in the millions, has been invested in, in development of the studio. Yeah. So I hope that answers your question. Okay, I think, yeah, thank you so much, uh, Prof Vinesh and Miss Swan to answering all the questions. I think it's a very fruitful session because uh, we talk about all the careers and uh, the requirements to studies. And uh, I see uh, Tony and Hafiza, they are saying thank you in the comment. Yeah. Thank you. So hope to see you in APU then. Tony and Hafiza. <laughs> yeah. All right. So yeah, I think it's 
this is going to be the end of the sessions. Uh, thank you, Provinesh, and thank you, Miss Swan. Uh, and you. of course, thank you to all the participants joining our live sessions. Uh, we're going to have more uh, live webinar coming soon. Uh, there's one more at 2 p.m. for business-related program. Uh, 3.30, there's a psychology-related webinar. Then uh, at 5 p.m. is talking about design, animation, visual effects, and so on. And of course, at 8 p.m., we have something called fire side chat with the APO champions, which uh, we will be talking with the students who, uh, uh, I mean, to APO students who won a uh, champion in multiple uh, competitions. All right. So stay tuned. Follow us on our Facebook and Instagram page and also our YouTube channel. All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye.